Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. This is Imad and here's Google Apps Updates Roundup number 46. This is the last episode that includes the changes that took place in April 2022. So let me show you every new change but before starting let me remind you to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to get notified about my upcoming videos. And now let's jump in. I will start with YouTube music and there are some design tweaks starting from the mixed for you section. Now we no longer see that generic cover art for the super mixes but instead we have the featured artist album art that will give you an idea about the type of songs you will find inside each super mix and that also looks much better. The second change is the bigger listen again carousel as you see now it includes two rows instead of only one and each row will show you 10 items. Change number three is the new icon for the smart downloads. If you take a look closely you will see a sparkle icon next to the downloaded playlists and we used to have a different icon that looks like a lightning bolt. Next, Gboard. And now we got a new tool that will automatically add emojis to your text to make it more fun. So let me show you an example. Here is the word hi and as you see I have a button that looks like a magic stick. Tapping on it once will add these four emojis to the word. I can tap on it again to change the style and here's a third style and the tapping on it again for the fourth time will remove everything. Here's another example but this time I have a full sentence instead of only a word. As you see I still have the button and the tapping on it once will give me this style and as you see the words I'm using a movie night are relevant to the emojis which is camera, popcorn and some posters. I can tap on it again and now it's adding the popcorn between the words not only after the sentence and this is the third style. And now it's time for today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by cdkeyoffers.com. It's an online digital store that sells original Windows 10 and the office keys in a very discounted price. Not only this, but you can use my special promo code ID20 to get extra 25% discount and instead of the regular 20%. Windows 10 OEM key will cost you $16.23 which is insanely cheap and the purchase process is very simple. Just click on buy now, choose your preferred payment method, in my case I will choose PayPal. Sign in with your PayPal account and click on pay now. After successfully paying click on return to merchant to continue your order and now the payment is done and the order number is showing on the screen. After a few seconds, the website will redirect you to the purchases page. To view your code, click on the view keys slash codes button, then click on get the key. To activate your Windows 10 OEM key, copy the code from the website, head over to your Windows settings, under the system page, scroll all the way down and click on about. Then product key and the activation, and finally click on a change. Paste the code you just copied here, click on next, then activate, and now your original Windows key got activated. And if you are interested in Microsoft Office, you can get the full 2019 Professional Plus package for $45.82 after discount using the same promo code ID20. Please check the links in the description below and now let's get back to the review. Next, Google Lens on desktop can now do more actions. So here's an image of the Logitech MX Master 3. To search for it, right click on the image and then click search image with Google Lens. After a few seconds, a sidebar will appear on the right side with Google Lens results. It includes three tabs, search, text, and the translate. Under search, you will see the results of the image in addition to a search button to locate the product in Google search. The second tab is text, which will allow you to select any text in the image. And once selected, you will get the option to copy, listen to your selection, or pause the playback once started, another option to translate text, and finally start a Google search. The last tab is translate. Here it will give you the option to choose the languages you want and the translation will start immediately. In addition to the same options we saw under text. Back to the search tab and here we have a button called find image source which will show you the related images in Google search. Last but not least you can expand the sidebar into a full page by clicking the expand button at the top right corner to easily navigate the results. Next, Google Assistant. And now when you go to the assistant settings and then routines and then open any of the routines you have like this one for example, now we have the option to rename any routine by tapping on the edit button over here and it will give you the option to change its name. Another change under routines when you create a new one and then tap on add action scroll all the way down until you find delay start. Now you can set the delay start with seconds, not only hours and minutes. So before the minimum amount of time you can delay, any action is one minute, but now you can make it as low as one second like this. 
And the last change under the assistant settings. Now when you go to devices, you will see a new option here called remove unused devices. And when you go inside, it will show you the list of devices that you didn't use for three months as shown here in the description. And it says also that this means your other assistant devices won't be able to communicate with the devices you removed. To add a device back, just use your assistant on that device. And as per the description, it says that your assistant will be faster when you take this action. And I removed a lot of devices from my list and kept only one device to show you how you can do this. All you need to do is to take the device and then tap on remove at the bottom right corner. And that's it. That's all you need to do. And if you want to add the device again, simply use Google Assistant on it one more time. Next, Google Translate. And it got a couple of new Material U widgets. The first one is called Saved Translations. And the second one is called Translate Quick Actions. This is the first one, which is Saved Translations. So if you have any saved phrases inside the app, they will immediately appear in the list like this one. From here, you can listen to it. Este es un mensaje. Or you can copy it or simply remove it from your list. On top of this, you have two arrows at the top that will allow you to switch between saved and history. And under history, it will show you all the translation history you have. From here, you can also do the same actions like listening, copying, or you can simply add it to your saved list back again. The second one, which is quick actions, it will give you different actions like the ability to immediately translate whatever you have copied in your clipboard by tapping on this button like this. The second option is to start the voice mode. The third option is the conversations mode. Then you have the transcribe and finally the camera mode. The widget has two different styles depending on the size. So this is the first one and here is the second. The number of options you get here depends on the language. So for example, once I change to Arabic, I no longer have the transcribe option. I only have clipboard, voice, conversation and camera. iOS also got the same quick actions widget, but with a different design, you still have the clipboard option, voice, camera, conversation, and the transcribe. Next, Google Maps. And now the plus codes feature is supported in 18 more countries across the MENA region or Middle East and North Africa. If you are not familiar with plus codes, this feature will allow you to share any location on the map, even if it doesn't have a street name or a building number. So for example, here's a, a random area on the map. All I need to do is to drop a pin in this area and then expand the information card. And as you see, the plus code is located over here. And this is how its icon looks like. Tapping on it will immediately copy the plus code to your clipboard. When you put this code in your search like this, it will take you to the same exact location. And this code is much easier to manage compared to the normal coordinates. The second change is the easier navigation when you try to explore a specific place. So for example, when I expand the information card, as you see, I have some buttons here at the top like directions, drive, save, and so on. But when I continue scrolling, the same buttons will remain accessible at the bottom of the screen. Change number three is the new carousel that appears when you search for some places. So as an example, I searched for a shopping mall called Times Square Center in Dubai. And as you see, I have a carousel that gives me some information like the ratings and also the other shops I can find inside this shopping mall. And when I scroll all the way to the right and then tap on this card, it will take me right away to the directory tab to continue exploring. Now let me show you some small changes across different apps. And the first one is Google Photos. And now the animation that happens when you tap on the widget and then go back to the home screen is now linked to the widget itself. So for example, when I tap on this photo and then go back home, as you see, the animation is now linked. But previously, when you do the same action and then go back, the animation used to be linked to the app icon itself. But now it matches other apps like the clock app, for example. Next, Google Contacts. And now you can see the date when this contact was first added to your device. As shown here, it's added on the 2nd of May 2022. But unfortunately, this feature doesn't work with old contacts. So here's another one I added previously before adding this feature. And as you see, I don't have any date at the bottom. Next, Google Finds. And now we have the share option located at the bottom navigation bar. And instead of being located in the side menu, and when it comes to the functionality, it works exactly the same like before. Next, if you are a Pixel user, the launcher got a couple of new changes. The first one is the pill-shaped preferences button when you tap and hold on the Google search widget. And that matches exactly the customized button that you get when you tap and hold on the at-a-glance widget. Talking about the at-a-glance widget, we got now a new switch called 
earthquake alert and the, the description says alert to an earthquake larger than magnitude 4.5 detected nearby next google chrome and if you're using android 13 beta 1 you will see a different icon for google chrome on the right i have android 13 beta 1 and as you see the glyph icon inside is bigger than 12 l on the left and that's the only difference between the two so that's pretty much it for today those are all the changes i wanted to show you please let me know in the comments if you spotted any change in google apps that i didn't mention in this video but for now thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video